50 ways to mess with your friends. Only do these if they're a good sport. Number one, the angry lectern. Pop down a lectern in your friend's house and then run a redstone comparator out of it. Then connect up the redstone underneath their house to some sort of redstone of your choice. Now I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to do, but there, I'll just leave that there, shall I? Then you write a book telling them about your angry lectern. So the lectern is saying, no, don't read me. And then it said, I said, stop. And you can write whatever you want, but the more they get into the book, the angrier the lectern gets. Stop turning the page. Okay, I promise if you continue, we won't be friends. I'm, I'm warning you. Okay, final warning. Do not turn the last page. I'm not even sorry. I warned you. I warned you. I, and I, I told him it was an angry lectern, but they still read the book. They still... <laughs> Number two, Sky High. So your friend is AFK. That happens. Just make sure that they are for a second. Then place a bunch of scaffolding as high as you want. The higher, the better. Then attach a fishing rod to them, climb up that tower, and then right click. You'll then drag them up the tower, and if you carefully make your way all the way to the top, you can then drag them up quite a substantial height. Then wait for them to return from their AFK session, and then simply remove the bottom block. Number three, plant power. Not every single one of these ways to mess with your friends ends in someone hitting the respawn button, but there are ways to mess with your friends in probably worse ways. And one of them is spamming saplings all around their house. And I mean really going to town with thousands and thousands of saplings. Trust me, the investment is worth it because every sapling you place is a few seconds of your time. But it's a few hours of theirs. Given enough time, those saplings will grow and grow and grow until they are one solid mass of trees around them. I can't even see their house anymore. And if they come back in their house and they're just totally confused and <laughs> they may have to dig their way out quite a long way. To clean this up would take literally hours and they won't even know who did it. Number four, it wasn't me, it was the man in the chicken costume. I think you know where this is going, but you call on your good old friend poultry man and you spam chickens everywhere to the point where there's so many chickens they don't even know what to do with them. And if they ask you who did this, you can always blame the man in the chicken costume. Simple, but effective. Number five, is it a bird? Is it a plane? Go to your friend's house, wherever it may be, and grab yourself a bunch of scaffolding. Make your way all the way to build height and also make sure it's directly above your friend's house. Make your way to the top of that scaffolding and then encase a single block of lava in a couple of blocks. You wait for your friend to come back and the chances are curiosity will get the better of them and they will just hit the bottom scaffolding. And then they realize what's coming their way. So you can sit back, relax, and watch them panic as they try and work out how to stop a big pillar of lava from completely destroying their house. This is Pearlescent Moon's genuine reaction to this prank. She had no idea what to do. She opted for this method of water mixed with some scaffolding, and it really didn't take long for the lava to completely destroy her house. Everyone reacts differently to this one, as long as your friend doesn't mind their house being destroyed. Please do not grief. Or better yet, make it over your house and then watch your friend panic as they try to save your build. Number six, fake treasure hunts. Go to your friend's house and pop down a sign that tells them to go to some specific coordinates thousands of blocks away. Tell them that they're going to get a reward for doing so. You then travel there yourself via the nether or via elytra and then pop down a sign that simply says, got em. And their face, when they see this, will be absolutely priceless. 
Number seven, a new feature. You go to your friend's house and you locate their food chest. You see exactly the numbers that they've got and then rename rotten flesh to the same as their food. So you replace the mutton with rotten mutton. You replace the bread with rotten bread in the exact quantities. And then you leave and that is all. When someone says, why is my food all rotten? You tell them that it's a new feature in 1.14. Seeing as lots of people are coming back to the game and don't know what's new. Chances are they'll believe you and see how long you can get away with it. Number eight, don't lose your head. This is a simple one where if your friend is AFK and not wearing armor, you dispense a silly Minecraft head onto them and see how long it is before they notice that they're wearing one. I recommend the dragon head as it is absolutely ludicrous. Number nine, locked in a box. You take a composter and you place it on the floor. You then spam it with some vegetation to a very specific point where there's just three pixels away from the top. Place a trapdoor on the top and you'll find that you can't actually get out at all. For some reason, you have to break your way out. So you take your AFK friend and politely push them into said composter. You then lock the trap door downwards and when they come back from being AFK, they'll find that they can't escape. And of course, you can laugh at them as they try and figure this out. Credits to DocM77 for showing me this one. Number 10, the mysterious orb. A lot of people don't know that you can actually craft end crystals. They look like this and you find them in the end with the ender dragon. If you remove the obsidian, they just float on their own like this. This is how you craft them in case you didn't know with a gas tier and an eye of ender surrounded by glass. Fairly simple, but an expensive item. All you do is plop it down inside someone's house. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that these are extremely explosive. So if your friend comes back and finds it, they may not know what it is or that they can interact with it. Basically, they have a choice, live with it or punch it. And that's what's likely to happen. Number 11, thinking with portals. The portal makes probably the worst noise in Minecraft. It's so obnoxiously loud. So you can see where this is going. Hide more than one portal underneath their base and in close proximity to their main portal. And it's so annoying. It's really, really annoying. Number 12, no sleep for you. You go right next to their bed and make a small hole underneath it. You then lure in a zombie and convince them to go inside that hole. Rename them no sleep for you and then cover the hole back up exactly how you found it. When your friend then tries to sleep to skip the night, they'll find that they can't because there's a mob somewhere and they may spend ages looking for it before they find that mob and realize they've been pranked. Number 13, bamboozled. You take the bamboo plant and you start spamming it all around their base, kind of like we did with the saplings. However, this is a different kind of annoying because bamboo is very easy to get rid of. Or is it? If you take the bamboo plant and try and whack it in this quantity with a sword, it is so painfully laggy to get rid of that this is just your life now. I would rather just live with the bamboo because this is absolute torture. And watching your friend lag around trying to get rid of the bamboo is absolutely hilarious. Number 14, snowed in. So let's pretend that your friend has made their house in a snowy area. Just outside their house, we're going to dig a big hole. Once you get down deep enough for them to take a dive, you take your scaffolding block and build it high enough so that it is at the level as the snow. You then cover up the hole using the scaffolding and then cover that up with snow, completely hiding our new scaffolding floor. We then play the long game and hide underneath it until our friend comes back along to enter their home. If you time it just right, as you hit the bottom block of the scaffolding, they should come tumbling down into your pitfall. Number 15, still very annoying. People used to do this when Minecraft first came out and it's still annoying. Pop some obsidian over your friend's chests and watch them go, <sighs> Number 16, Surprise Creeper. 
You could probably work out what we're going to be doing here, but you go inside your friend's house, you then knock through a tiny hole just above their ceiling, and place two trap doors. This will ensure maximum carnage. You then place a third trap door on the ceiling, you lure in a creeper with a big risk involved into that space, you push him by any means necessary, whether it is by piston or by luring him in yourself, until he is in the correct position. You then make sure that your friend comes in and sees that trap door. Their immediate reaction is to open it and need I say more? Number 17, the bed bandit. This is a very simple one, but it's annoying nonetheless. Every time your friend puts their bed down, simply move it a couple of blocks. Then the next time they die, they will always end up back at spawn, which is really, really annoying. Number 18, the floor is not quite lava. So if your friend has decorated their house with a bunch of carpets, simply remove those carpets and add magma underneath. Replace the carpets, do try and remember the pattern, I couldn't remember all those colours, and then watch as when they come in their house they try and figure out why they're taking a lot of damage. Number 19, that shouldn't be there. Enter your friend's house and remove some of the ceiling blocks, and replace them with a slightly odd colour such as acacia. Then go into the ceiling itself and add a bunch of anvils. They will then walk into their house, think that's strange, and fix their roof just to find a bunch of anvils falling on them. And it doesn't matter which part they try and break, it, they will all fall down. Number 20, what goes up? Outside your friend's house, we're going to create another curiosity scaffolding. At the very top, we're going to add a bunch of chickens because they're the easiest mob to spawn if you've got a lot of eggs. Of course, I'm just going to use the spawning eggs and you can make sure that there's really quite a lot. If your scaffolding is high enough, they won't be rendered in at all and they won't see them. Therefore, they will assume nothing is wrong, and then break the bottom block. Now, of course, this doesn't do any damage to their home at all, but it's absolutely hilarious to see not just one or two chickens come in, but a lot of chickens <laughs> descending upon the house. And again, you can always just blame the man in the chicken costume. Number 21, the mysterious gonging noise. You go inside your friend's house, we make another secret room, and this time we're going to make a hopper clock that every now and again, depending on how many items you put in the hopper, will dispense an arrow at a couple of bells. And every now and again, your friend is going to hear a mysterious and wonder where it came from. Number 22, a hidden fish. You go to the front door of your friend's house and knock out a single block next to the door. You then place a puffer fish, and when they try and walk in, they will take a lot of damage. The more puffer fish you hide, the deadlier it gets. Number 23, snowmen. I think this is pretty clear what we're going to be doing. We're going to be placing a lot of snow blocks with carved pumpkins and letting them do their thing. The more you add, the more snow there is, and the harder the cleanup is when they discover it. My goodness, how annoying would that be? Number 24, lazy wood cutting. Everyone's been doing this to annoy servers for generations. You take out the most accessible part of the tree and leave the rest, leaving a bunch of floating trees all around their base. It actually hurts to see that. Number 25, wordplay. You go into your friend's chest or barrel, you take all of their grey blocks in particular, and you mix up their names. Andesite may become stone, stone may become gravel, you get the idea. When they come to build with them, they may get very confused and frustrated why the names don't match up to what they're placing. Number 26, a surprise firework. Again, go to the front door of your friend's base and make a hole relatively deep, about the height that a firework will travel. You then fill up your dispenser with a bunch of very powerful fireworks and then connect the redstone up to a pressure plate that they would normally use to open their door. Make sure that it's all connected up and add a trapdoor underneath. The mixture of the two will release a firework and release a trapdoor at the same time, and it can be a very confusing experience where they may even fall in the hole and take damage from the firework. Number 27, do it for the vine. Cover your friend's house in a small amount of vines, and in no time at all, it will spread all over their house. And it's very easy to place, 
but quite annoying to get rid of. Number 28, smoking out the house. So we've got our friend's house here, and we're gonna go and remove some of the floor blocks and replace the block underneath with a bunch of campfires. We then replace the floor back and it is absolutely chock full of smoke. You may even trick your friends into thinking their house is actually on fire. Number 29, the oldest trick in the book. You go to the front of someone's house, you add a couple of pistons either side of a redstone dust, replace the stone on top and add a pressure plate on top of that where the door would be. You then watch as your friends enter their home and get bamboozled by the oldest trick in the book. Number 30, the long game. You ask your friend where they are and you say that you want to meet up. They will then give you some coordinates and you go and see where they are. When you get there, you act like you cannot see them. You say, where are you? And they'll tell you right there. Make sure you don't look directly at them. They'll say that they're right in front of you. They may even punch you. You have to act all surprised and you tell them that they're invisible. And you see how long you can go for. You tell them to re-log and that you still can't see them. You tell them that your friends can't see you. Nobody can see them. And see how long you can make them think they're invisible for. Number 31, AFK again. If you're like me and you like to AFK quite a lot, you need a bunch of ideas to mess with people that do this. The classic is to encase them in obsidian. Now we're going to take that one step further by introducing an upside down piston that is going to squash them over and over again. In 114, that will then put them in the crouching position over and over and over again, which makes it so difficult to escape. It may bring them back if you extend with all the noises, so make sure that they are fully encased. And then just watch what happens. This is what it looks like if you're in the obsidian cage. It's an absolute nightmare to get out of. Number 32, man's best friend. You're gonna have to tame a bunch of wolves, shouldn't be too difficult to find, and then you make them sit off in the corner somewhere. You then convince your friend to punch you a couple of times, saying, I bet you can't hit me four times. I'm guessing that they will take you up on that offer and very quickly try and punch you. You then run away towards your wolves and watch what happens when they try and do that once you make them unsit. They will then go for your friend and they don't stand much of a chance. Number 33, a helpful neighbor. If you live right next to your friend's house and you're a little bit of a prankster, you may want to consider setting one of these up. What you do is add a minecart transportation system that goes directly underneath your neighbor's house. And you need to make sure that you set it up so that the rails cover all underneath your friend's flooring. That way, if you create some kind of prank that involves your neighbor's untimely demise, then you can send in your hopper minecart and be do the neighborly thing of collecting their items. You then do the non-neighborly thing of not giving them back. Number 34, a pretty lame prank. So not all of these are the strongest and not all of them involve pressing the respawn button. Some of them are just annoying. And if you put ice under someone's carpet, it may take them a long time before they realize that they've been slipping and sliding everywhere. Number 35, fake TNT. Again, go to the front of your friend's house and add some water followed by a TNT, then a stone and then the pressure plate. You get all the fun of watching them activate TNT without any of the actual explosions and you can make them, well, panic. Number 36, global warming. You can add in a bunch of coarse dirt and replace all of their crops with dead bushes or just some of them to make it a bit more convincing. When they go to their farms and they wonder what the heck has happened, you can tell them it's a new feature in 1.14. Number 37, Skelebros. If you have a mob spawner near your friend's house, it's probably good to get some use out of it. So instead of making an XP farm, you just make a big old water trail that leads directly to their house and covered in a painting. You can use bubble elevators and water to push them all the way. They will then not realize where these mobs are coming from and will probably have a pretty bad time just hanging around in their house. Number 38, making a racket. 
If you go underneath or to the side of your friend's house, you can create some pretty abysmal noises using some trap doors, some normal doors, and some note blocks. How far you want to take it is up to you. But this would drive me absolutely insane. Number 39 cobwebs. If you watch your friend log out of the game and you know their exact location, there's nothing stopping you adding a bunch of cobwebs and even making a little hole underneath them so when they log back in, not only are they stuck, they may have to panic somewhat. Number 40, secret rooms. Going into my friends' houses and making my own personal bedroom has been a pastime of mine for many years now. I thought I'd include it because it's always very funny if you manage to hide a whole room inside your friend's house without them noticing until they finally do notice and want you out of their house. Number 41, a shortcut. If you're a server administrator, it could be quite fun to mess with the inhabitants of your server by adding a command block with a sign that tells them that they can go back to exactly where they died if they have a problem. But you make a command block that actually just says forward slash kill at P. That way when they spawn back in, they see the sign, they hit the button and they get bamboozled all over again. Number 42, staying grounded. Your friend has just planted a fresh batch of sugarcane and they're hoping to make some books out of it. Well, you come along and place string over every single one of them. Those sugarcane will now no longer grow at all. And because string is very difficult to see, it may be a very long time before they notice. See how long you can keep it going. Number 43, mildly annoying. If your friend is AFK, then all you need to do is prepare some cursive binding items and dispense them on them for maximum annoyance. I recommend gold armor as it, it is the most bling and then watch them go, ah, oh, I can't take them off. Number 44, how many diamonds? Go inside your friend's house and take a look at their valuables. If they've got a small amount of diamonds, consider renaming them to individual numbers and then placing them back. When they come back to see their diamonds after a lengthy renaming process, they will be very frustrated as each diamond will take up a single slot. And if you've played Minecraft enough, you know that every single space in your inventory is absolutely crucial. So if they come back with a full inventory, that's really, really annoying. Number 45, call the plumber. Go one block above the ceiling and place loads of water. It will create a dripping effect and then using staircases, fill those with water and it will look like their entire house is leaking. Leave a sign to let them know. Number 46, another chicken prank. Making chicken pranks has been a bit of a theme for this video. I wouldn't know why, but you can automate the process by creating a chicken dispenser. By hiding a dispenser in their house and then linking up the redstone so that there is a comparator leading all the way back into that dispenser, fill the area above the hopper with chickens and then as they grow up and lay eggs they will start dispensing in their house and eventually fill up with plenty of chickens. Number 47, stuck in the nether. You can rig your friend's nether portal on the nether side to be dismantled when they arrive by adding two dispensers, one with lava and one with a fire resistance potion. When they pop through, they trigger the dispensers and breaks the portal. If they don't have a flint and steel on them, they may be stuck there for a while. Number 48, jukeboxes. So if you follow your friend while they're mining, let them do their thing. But when you get to a pretty spooky part, play the music disc 11 and watch them freak out. Number 49, parrots everywhere. Again, this is a music related one. Go under your friend's house, put a load of parrots and then add a mob of some kind and then the parrots will constantly make noises and scare your friend into thinking there's creepers everywhere. Number 50, the best till last. So I've got my friend to put on my skin and everything is normal, except it's 
not really normal because it's actually on backwards and it's actually really difficult to tell that at all. So you can make an exact replica of your skin just back to front and then mess with your friends to make them think that you are actually facing them. And if you lay down it just it just looks absolutely ridiculous. You can have so much fun with this because you really cannot tell anymore. Well, that is 50 ways to mess with your friends in Minecraft. Thank you so much for watching this video. It, I know it's been quite a long one. It took me absolutely ages to make it. So if you made it to the end of the video, please, in the comments, let me know which one was your favorite in particular. And let me know if you have any ways to mess with people that I didn't cover. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And good.